192 games. That's how many entries there were to this year's O2A2 Game Jam. And, unless you're part of that specific community, most of you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. So, let me give you a brief rundown. A Game Jam is a game development event where participants have a certain amount of time to create a game, usually under some kind of theme or criteria. You are only allowed to work on the game during this allotted jam period, hence the challenge. Some game jams are competitions and offer prizes, while others are just for fun. I've always been interested in indie game development, particularly visual novels. As a result, I've always wanted to join a game jam. I've had a few ideas for larger indie game projects, but they would take a lot of time and assets, neither of which I can really afford at the moment. But there is one jam that sparked my interest because it didn't require much of either. Only one of any asset, or O2A2 for short, is a 10-day visual novel jam. It's been hosted annually for the past few years, and the main restriction is that you are only allowed to, as the name implies, use one of any type of asset. This means one sprite, one background, one music track, one voice actor, one sound effect, etc. It also has a 1,000 word limit on the script. This limited scope made it perfect for making a short and sweet, but complete, game. I won't go too much into my experience during the jam because that's not what this video is about. No, what I want to do is highlight the amazing indie devs who participated in this jam as well as I did. Because this is something that's important to me, supporting other indie creators that I enjoy. Which is why I decided that I'm going to play all 192 entries. Now, under any other circumstances, this would be completely unrealistic. But, due to the nature of O2A2, most games don't take more than 10 or so minutes to play. So, this is the first part of my journey to play every O2A2 2024 game. Despite planning to play all of them, I unfortunately won't be able to talk about every game. I'll just be highlighting some of my personal favorites, but if your game doesn't get mentioned, please don't be discouraged. I just can't review them all, and you should be so proud that you locked in and made a game. Also, I'll be playing the games in publication order, and this is the first part because I haven't gotten through all of the games yet. They may be short, but 192 games is still a lot. So, with all of that out of the way, let's get into it. The first game I want to talk about is called The Painter and a Man. It's a short little story about a painter who creates pieces depicting people who die. One day, he gets a very strange phone call. It's from a human, one who's about to die. He's a very rich man who wishes to know what will be on his painting after he passes. This story very much reads like a fable. The way it's written is charming with a strong sense of voice and it flows very well. The visuals accompany it perfectly, and I especially like how the dialogue is represented with these little text bubbles. This is truly just a fantastic little story. Last Kill is incredibly impressive given the confines of the jam. The sprite has subtle but effective animation work, such as the crackling lantern, floating hair pieces, and a blink cycle. It also uses camera movements and other tricks to make the game feel larger than it really is. The story goes that you wake up by a river and there's a gate guarding a bridge. You must explore the environment to remember who you are and why you're there. Definitely give this one a try if it looks interesting to you. Afterlife Library OXO follows the player as they wake up from death in the titular Afterlife Library. A woman named Amaranth greets us before offering to return us to the land of the living. If we beat her in a game. It's tic-tac-toe, but renamed here to Priests and Wizards. And yes, they did fully program in the minigame. You even get to choose to play as the priest or wizard, and there's several possible outcomes as a result. 
I love Amaranth's design, and she too is slightly animated. This one has a solid premise, and it's very fun to play because of the mechanics. Step by Little Step is a retelling of the myth of Orpheus and Eurydice. But instead of trying to bring your lover back from the underworld, it's your cat. If you know how the myth goes, then you know how the story ends. And yes, it is as emotionally devastating as it sounds. This game absolutely hit me in the feels because I am a deep cat lover. This is my baby Misty, by the way. But it was so beautifully written, the message is profound, and the art style is simple but stylish. This game is beautiful. Please check it out and send them your support. Tea Party is an adorable game, where you wake up as a guest at this kitten's tea party. You proceed to engage in a cute but wacky conversation with her, and you have the ability to have an interested or insolent attitude. There's two endings, and when you find out why you were there in the first place, it gives the whole game this cute, conclusive feeling to it. The art style was definitely my favorite part of the game, though. Just look at how cute this is! It really nails the whole childlike and silly feel that the game is going for, and I was just smiling the whole time I was playing this one. The Sheep That Wanted to Fly is an incredibly simple game. It's just a little story about a sheep who gets jealous of birds and their ability to fly. So, a magician grants him this skill. But the sheep ends up learning that flight might not be all it was cracked up to be. This one was just funny, in my opinion. It reminds me of a story you'd find in an elementary school. It's got this little charm to it, though, I don't know. The sheep falling like this also made me laugh really hard. <laughs> Laundromat Vertigo is a short thriller visual novel. It takes place at midnight in a laundromat, where the protagonist's lack of sleep has caused him to envision a small piece of lint as being able to talk to him. They have a strange but pretty comedic conversation, yet there's this underlying unsettling feeling that does not turn out to be unfounded. If there's one thing I want to praise this game for above all else, it's atmosphere. The style, the design, the writing all work brilliantly to create this sort of liminal space feeling that really enhances the experience. And I won't spoil what it is, but the twist at the end perfectly pays off all of this tension and unease. Before we wrap up, I'd also like to highlight some other games that I really enjoyed that I didn't get to talk about here. I definitely recommend giving these ones a look. Roll the tape! And that's where I'm stopping for now. You can find all of these games, along with every other O2A2 entry, at the link in the description. I really encourage you to go and explore the submission page, play the games, and leave reviews on the ones you like. Also, feel free to check out my entry, No Blood No Foul, if you'd like. I know this isn't really my usual content, but I hope you guys enjoy it regardless. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.